Nigel, a win with the white pieces, but it looked tremendously dangerous for you. But then suddenly black went terribly wrong somewhere. Yeah, it was a <laughs> very tough game, actually. There weren't a lot of moves, but uh, it was action-packed. Um, I know my opponent to, to some degree, Daniel Cordry. Um, I played him once before. Actually, we had a, a slightly unpleasant uh, incident during that game. It was in the uh, South African uh, Open uh, when my opponent actually left the venue during the game. And uh, which is illegal, uh, but the uh, the rules don't actually stipulate what is the uh, the punishment for that, um, which was a warning in this case. So um, we'd had this sort of uh, history, so there was a little bit of tension to to this game, and uh, it's a very very sharp game. Uh, I mean, I played in a sharp way in the opening, just h4, h5, just almost immediately and um, in, in fact the opening of the the age file uh, turned out to be decisive um, in the end um, but there was some point in the middle game I just thought I was going to get mated but uh, the key variation which is what happened <laughs> just seemed to work for me I mean it's sort of by a miracle that so uh, uh, my bishop comes back and defends on the long diagonal. It's actually very easy to, to miss these backwards uh, captures on the, on the diagonal. Right now, our commentators, Simon and Yavanka, love it when we have a game where Harry the H. Bond is responsible <laughs> for a win. But I have to say, in this particular game, it was, it was a bit dubious. Well, I, d I don't know, actually, because um, I... Uh, I need to prepare a bit better uh, because I, I, I think I just didn't find the, the right plan. And I, uh, uh, I mean, my opponent played in an enterprising way uh, and got uh, tremendous activity. So, uh, however, I think it's very risky for him to be playing with an open age file. Uh, there were always tactics, and there were in the game. I mean, that was it. That was the, the key thing, because, in fact, if the age file is not open, um, you know, I'm, I'm in serious trouble. Uh, right. Now, do you believe in the saying that if you can play h4 in chess, you always play h4? Um, well, when your opponent's got a pawn on g6, it's uh, always tempting. Uh, and uh, in the Sicilian dragon, that's how you should play and you deliver checkmate on h8. It's very simple. Even if you were completely lost before? <laughs> of course. <laughs> right, now you were mentioning that there's a bit of history and slight unpleasantness that happened the last time you played your opponent yeah. from today. How is that, what is, does that affect you before the game? Is that something you think about? How does that affect you? Um, it was quite disturbing, actually. So uh, I decided to vary my routine today. I mean, normally I would start, I would have my breakfast and then I go back and start preparing. Uh, but I just wanted to have a clear head for today more than anything else. So I took a walk into town. Um, I had my traditional fish and chips uh, for lunch and, uh, and then came back and then did a, a bit of preparation uh, then. But I, I just wanted to be calm and just to get a little, a little bit of physical exercise and to, to lower the tension. Were there handshakes at the beginning? Oh, uh, sure, sure, sure. I mean, it was absolutely fine, but they just, you know, um, the, the point was, uh, was not uh, from the, uh, the previous game, whether my opponent is cheating. It's just illegal to leave the, the venue. So, you know, whatever the reason, you have, to in, uh, you have to inform the arbiter, and the arbiter may or may not uh, agree with you, and uh, he would normally accompany anyone who requested to leave the venue, so if it's permitted. So, I mean, this wasn't followed, and un unfortunately, these days, it's incredibly easy to cheat uh, in chess. I'm not suggesting my opponent was doing that. 
uh, but um, my personal view is it ought, it ought to be an um, automatic forfeit uh, if somebody's leaving the, the venue. And it's about time they change the FIDE rules. It's one of the many rules uh, which needs to be completely uh, updated and rewritten. Right. Now, um, are you happy with the way things have been going so far in this tournament for you, with your quality of play? Um, look, um, I think th three out of four is, is okay. I think it's a fair reflection of how I've played. Uh, not too badly, not too well. So, <laughs> so something in, in between. And, um, yeah, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not that... Uh, uh, concerned. I, I still think there's a lot of time and the, the, the crunch point tends to come a little bit later uh, in the event. Um, if you manage to win a couple of games consecutively at some key moment, you can suddenly be in a very strong position. So I just want to get poised. Right, well, we love any game where Harry the H pawn starts <laughs> off early. So thanks for giving us that and we wish you good luck for the remaining rounds. Uh, thanks, Tanya.